The Science Foundation College in Namavu kure jinja Ngo ingila kilomite mu Somero lia dene boarding Eli haba wala naba lenzi Kuolevo tusomisa arts ni sciences Ate erevo tusomisa sciences zoka Omwana mretu ku The Science Foundation College Fetu singo kusomisa sciences Okumanya visinga o Kwa ku 0 musambu 5 satu Chinana Abili musambu 0 muenda The Science Foundation College Best on sciences And best for sciences is a teacher at the Science Foundation College, the best school that teaches sciences. At A level, we teach sciences only. At all level, we teach arts and sciences. Today, we are going to study vapor pressure over liquid. This is the pressure exerted by vapor in equilibrium with a liquid. When a, a liquid is put into a container, it evaporates. It will evaporate. Also, the molecules in the vapor will condense into a liquid until such a time when the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. The minimum pressure that can be exerted on the surface of the liquid to prevent even a single molecule evaporating is ideally what we call vapor pressure. In the physics, it is called saturated vapor pressure. The vapor pressure of a liquid increases with temperature. The vapor pressure of a liquid increases with temperature temperature when it equates equates the pressure above the liquid the liquid boils Liquid boilers. The vaporous of liquid increases the temperature, and when it equates the pressure above the liquid or atmospheric pressure, the liquid boils. Boiling occurs through the whole liquid. The evaporation occurs on the surface. If we have got vapor pressure. Again, it's temperature. We have seen that vapor pressure increases with temperature. If this one is atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure, then this becomes the boiling, boiling point of that liquid. It implies that when the pressure is reduced, the boiling point also reduces. When the pressure is increased, the boiling point also increases. It is against this background that we can evaporate liquids, especially in the lab at lower temperature, by lowering the pressure above the liquid, that is using a suction pump. Or we can boil the liquid at a higher temperature by increasing the pressure above the liquid, such as in the pressure cooker. In the pressure cooker, the principle is keeping the pressure in the container high. The boiling point temperature will be also increased, and therefore, whatever we are cooking is going to boil faster than when you boil it at a lower temperature. But this is physics. Chemistry would be effect of a solute 
on the vapor pressure of a solvent. Effect of a solute on the vapor pressure of a solvent. There are two types of solutes. One is a non-volatile solute and two is a volatile solute. Let us start with the non-volatile solute. The non-volatile solute lowers the vapor pressure of the solvent. Explanation. Presence of the solute particles of a non-volatile solute lowers the tendency of the solvent molecules to evaporate, lowering evaporation. So the solute molecules will occupy part of the surface of the solvent, and this one lowers the evaporating tendency of the solvent molecules, which lowers the evaporation of water. So lowering the evaporation of water When you add a non solute into a solvent, the vapor pressure will lower. That at any given temperature, the vapor pressure of the solution is lower than the vapor pressure of the solvent. Lowering vapor pressure of the solvent by a solute will definitely increase the boiling point. If this is atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure, then it means that the boiling point of solvent is lower than the boiling point of solution. Lowering the pressure of the solvent means that the boiling point of the solution will increase. We have to heat the solution the temperature higher than that one over the boiling point of the solvent makes the vapor pressure equal to atmospheric pressure. pressure. Because we have to heat the solution to higher temperature to make the vapor pressure equal to atmospheric pressure. Not slow or relative lowering of vapor pressure. States that Relative lowering of vapor pressure is proportional to the molar fraction of the solute, i.e., vapor pressure of the solvent minus vapor pressure of the solution of vapor pressure of the solvent is equal to moles of the solute over moles of the solute plus moles of the solvent. We are P, vapor pressure of the solvent, P dash vapor pressure of the solution. For that solution, moles of a solute is negligible. Negri. Negligible compared, compared to moles of solvent. So for that solution, the moles of a solute are small, very small compared to the moles of a solvent. Actually, this law is only, is only achieved when the solution is dilute. It implies that P minus P dash over P will be equal to moles of solute over moles of Solvent. If M is the mass of solute, MR is molecular mass of solu solute, MS is the mass mass of 
solvent MR is is equal to molecular mass molecular mass of solvent then you can say that P minus P dash over P is equal to M over M R divided by M M S over M R S which is the same as M times M R S over M R times M S or oh, it implies that making MR the subject, MR the subject, you can see now that M times MRS over MS times P over P minus P dash. This expression can be used to determine the molecular mass of a solid. Example one, capture the molecular mass of a solid if a solution that contains one gram of a solid in a hundred grams of water at 20 degrees lowers the overpressure of water by 0 0.01 atmosphere. The overpressure of water at 20 degrees is 0 0.5 atmosphere. We have already seen that P minus P dash over P is equal to M over M R times M R S over M S. P minus P dash is 0 0.001. P is 0 0.5. This is equal to mass of a solute, which is 1 over molecular mass of a solute times molecular mass of a solvent, which is 18, molecular mass of water is 18, over the mass of water, which is 100. Making MR the subject, then it will be equal to 18 times 0 0.5 over 100 times 0 0.001. This is equal to 9 over 0 0.1, which is equal to 90 grams, which is equal to 90 grams. The example 2, calculate the evaporation of a solution that contains glucose, molecular mass 180, in 100 grams of water at 25 degrees. The vapor pressure of water at 25 degrees is 3,168 pascals. Solution from pressure of the solvent minus pressure of the solution over the pressure of the solvent is equal to moles of a solute divided, divided by moles of a solvent. So you can see that P3 169 minus P dash, the evaporation of the solution, over P3 169, the evaporation of the solvent, is equal to the moles of the solute, which is 18 over 180 divided by the moles of water which is 100 grams over 18 this one is equal to it is equal to 18 over 180 times 18 over 100 which is equal to 0. 018. It implies that 
3169 minus P dash is equal to 0 0.018 times 3169. Then P dash is equal to 3169 minus 57, which is equal to 3111. Pascals. Therefore, the vapor pressure, vapor pressure or solution is equal to 3111 Pascals. This example of 3, a solution that contains 18 grams of substance X in 100 grams of water has a vapor pressure of 3,111 pascals. Calculate the molecular mass of X. The vapor pressure of water at 25 degrees is 3,169 pascals. Again, we say that Vapor pressure of a solvent minus vapor pressure of a solution over vapor pressure of a solvent is equal to moles of a solute divided by moles of a, a solvent. There are four three. 169 minus 3111 over 3169 will be the moles of a solute, which is 18 grams over molecular mass of a solute, represented by mR, divided by moles of a solvent. The solvent is water, so the mass of a solvent is 100 grams divided by molecular mass of water, which is 18. This is equal to 18 times 18 over 100 times M R is equal to 57 over 3169. Making M R the subject, M R is equal to 18 times 18 times the vapor pressure of water 3069 divided by the difference in the vapor pressure which is 57 times 100 which is equal to 180.1 therefore the molecular mass molecular mass of x is equal to 180 0.1 grams. B. Volatile solute. Both the solute and the solvent are volatile, i.e., they can easily change into vapor. And therefore, each vaporize and contribute to the vapor pressure above the solution. However, the most more volatile component will contribute more to the vapor pressure than the other. And each component will definitely lower the vapor pressure of the other because they are both competing to evaporate. The more volatile component will evaporate more than the less volatile component. But the presence of a less volatile component lowers the evaporation of the more volatile component and the more volatile component lowers the evaporation of the less volatile component. So each component lowers the vapor pressure of the other. Lotz law states that the pass pressure of a component at a given temperature varies linearly with its concentration or is proportion to this concentration. Or to the partial pressure of any component in a mixture at constant temperature 
is a product of its molar fraction in the solution and the vapor pressure of the pure component at the same temperature. The partial pressure of any component in a mixture at a constant temperature is a product of its molar fraction in a solution and the vapor pressure of the pure component at the same temperature. So the partial pressure of A in the mixture is equal to molar fraction of A times P naught A or vapor pressure of, of A, where XA is the molar fraction, molar fraction of A and P naught A is the vapor pressure of pure A at the same temperature. According to Rod's law, the vapor pressure of the solution P total is equal to molar fraction of A times P naught A plus the molar fraction of B times P naught P. O is equal to partial pressure of A plus partial pressure of B. Then you can look at ideal solution. Ideal solution and you see that is a solution that obeys obeys law law C law then the properties 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 of ID ID solution one has uniform forces of attraction between similar similar and non similar similar molecules molecules all particles. So the forces of attraction between A and A or B and B are equal to the force of attraction between A and and B. Then the temperature temperature of solution is equal to temperature of A and that of B. Assuming the temperature of A and B are equal and also volume of solution solution is equal to volume of A plus volume of B. When we are making the, the solution, the volume of the solution is the sum of the volume of A plus volume of B. So there is no change in the volume. In some other solution, when you mix it, volume of A plus volume of B, may not be the same as the sum. The volume may be either higher or lower than the sum of volume of A and B4. But for ideal solution, the volume of a solution is equal to volume of A plus volume of B, and the temperature of the solution is the average temperature between A and B. The average temperature of A and B. If A and B are the same, the temperature of the solution will also be the same. It has uniform forces of attraction between like and unlike particles or molecules, i.e. the force of attraction between A and A or B and B is the same as that one between A and, and B. The composition diagram for an ideal mixture. A more volatile than B means that the vapor pressure of A 
is higher than that one of B at the same temperature. This line here shows the pressure of the mixture, which is equal to partial pressure of A plus partial pressure of B. This total line shows partial pressure of B, which is equal to molar fraction of B times vapor pressure of B. This line here shows that partial pressure of A is equal to molar fraction of A times vapor pressure of A. So this side we have 100% B, this side we have 100% A. The total percentage is 100. So we can say this is 100% B, this is 100% A. In the middle here we have Percentage of A plus percentage of B equal to 100%. If we take the molar fraction, the maximum molar fraction is 1. So the molar fraction of, of B will go this way. Molar fraction, fraction of B. And this will have moral fraction of A. So this side is the maximum is 1. The maximum moral fraction is 1. So any other value in between, it is moral fraction of A plus moral fraction of B will be equal to 1. Composition of the vapor from that one is low the molar fraction of A in the vapor is equal to partial pressure of A over vapor pressure of the solution. Is equal to partial pressure of A over the total partial pressures of A and B. Where A dash is the molar fraction of A in the vapor and the B dash is the molar fraction of B in the vapor. The total molar fraction is 1, so having gotten the molar fraction of one component, we can get the molar fraction of another component by subtracting 1 minus the molar fraction of the component we know. Sample question A state load slow. Load slow states that the partial pressure of a component in a mixture is a product of its molar fraction and its vapor pressure, i.e. partial pressure of A is equal to molar fraction of A times P naught A, where PA is the partial pressure of A, XA molar fraction of A, P naught A is the vapor pressure of pure A. Part B a mixture of A and B obeys load slow. The vapor pressure of A and B at 10 and 2.9 kN per meter squared. Calculate the composition of the vapor. First, we get the vapor pressure of the mixture, which is equal to XA P naught A plus XB P naught B. This is the same as 0 0.5 over 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 times 10.00 plus 0 0.5 over 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 then times 2.92 equal to 5 plus 1.46 a total of 6.46 kilonewton is per meter squared then the composition of A in the vapor will be equal to PA 
over p total, which is equal to 5 over 6.46, which is equal to 0 0.77. Therefore, the more fraction, the more fraction of A in the vapor is equal to 0 0.77. If I want to get the molar fraction of B in vapor, molar fraction of B in vapor, we remind ourselves and say that the two molar fraction is 1, so it will be 1 minus 0 0.77, which will be equal to 0 0.23, 0 0.23. Well, the molar fraction of any vapor is 0 0.77. Example 2. Obtain and obtain form an ideal solution. 1. State road slow. Road slow states that the partial pressure of a component in a, in a mixture is a product of its molar fraction in the mixture and river pressure of the pure component. When you are revising, every time you find the same question, rewrite it to, to get it into your head. You keep on rewriting every time you meet it. We saw it in, in the example one, state slow, slow. We defined it, also we are defining it in the number two. State slow, slow, state slow, state slow, the partial Pressure of a component in a mixture is a product of its small fraction and the vapor pressure of the pure component. B. Explain what is meant by an ideal solution. An ideal solution is a solution that obeys load slow and it has the following properties has uniform forces of attraction between like and unlike molecules or particles in, in the solution. Particles in, in the solution. The volume of the solution is the sum of the volumes of its components and its formation does not involve change in temperature. Just the saying that ideal solution is the solution that will be slow slow may not be enough to, to get all the marks. So, every time they say, set load slow if space allows, also talk about the qualities of an ideal solution. In addition to saying that it is a solution that will be load slow. Part three. Catch the evaporation of a solution that contains 50 grams of obtain, 30 grams of octane. First, you are supposed to get the moles of obtain in 50 grams, the moles of octane in 30 grams, then you get the mole fraction of obtain and octane, then you finally calculate the evaporation of the solution. So, obtain RFM of obtain obtain is C seven H sixteen will be equal to twelve times seven plus sixteen times one, which is equal to eighty four plus sixteen, which is equal to one hundred. Grams. Then the models, models of F10 will be equal to 50 grams over 100, which is equal to 0 0.5 moles. Similarly, we get the models of octane. Models of octane. The octane is the C8H18, which is equal to 
This will be called 12 times 12 times 8 plus 18 times 1. This is equal to 96 plus 18. This is 4. 104, 114. Then the moles, moles of octane will be equal to 38 over 104, equal to 0 0.3. Total number of moles, total number of moles be equal to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3, which is equal to 0 0.8. Then the P total of the of the solution will be equal to 0 0.5 over 10 over 0 0.8 one fraction of 10 times the vapor pressure of 10 which is 4, 7, 3.2 plus 0 0.3 over 0 0.8 Times one three nine pascals. This one is equal to is equal to two ninety five point eight plus fifty two point one is equal to three one two pascal. Total pressure is equal to molar fraction over 10 and vapor pressure over, over 10 plus molar fraction over 10 and vapor pressure of 10, which is equal to 295.8 plus 51.1, which is equal to 312 pascals. Then part 4, calculate the percentage of octane in the vapor. Part 4, calculate the percentage of octane in the vapor. So percentage, percentage of octane in the vapor is equal to P octane over P total times 100, which is equal to 52.1 over the total pressure, which is 3112 times 100 percent, which is equal to 16.6 percent.